Cheers. Hi there, Graham from Penguin Motors here. Um, I was going to pluck a little video out of thin air because it's about an engine I'm going to run up. And I thought I'd just show you the difference between two exhaust manifolds on the same engine. And then I thought that's not very interesting, just one short, you know, this is that exhaust, that was that exhaust. So I thought I'd better do a little bit of an intro to the engine. And because then I realised that when I initially ran this engine, I didn't run it on either of the two manifolds I was going to test it on, or show you in a video. I ran it on this. This is a small bore Spooltex, 38 and 45 millimetre, but equally it could be a Yang's bed, it could be an Ashley, because the small bore stuff is all the same manifold. Um, now, this is kind of most people's first stage of tune. But I get a lot of questions about, oh, well, you know, well, I've got this head, this cam, whatever else, manifold's probably restrictive. Do I need a bigger one? And that's my question to you guys now. So what I want you to do is leave a comment at which point you think this manifold will bottle up power, you know? So we'll power run it or brick, well, 150 horsepower. So 150 horsepower, do you need a bigger manifold? Is it 155, is it 160? Would this manifold make 170 or maybe even 180 horsepower? So tell me what you think, leave a comment, because we like comments. And then we'll show you what this radio manifold actually did. So, so before we can do a test, we need an engine. And it wasn't this one we used, but this is just what's sitting on a dyno. And what I was doing here, I did a cam test and I tested a whole bunch of cams. And we were using one of my dyno mules. We were using my 2.1 dyno mule, so that's 2.1 Pinto, 93 millimeter pistons, big valve cutouts, steel rods from Burton's, Best Tech distributor, race Burton cylinder head, pair of 45s with some big 40 millimeter chokes, and my small bore 421 manifold. And like I say, I tested. I think nine different cams over the course of one weekend. So there was a lot of running and we got quite a lot of data. So I'm now going to show you a dyno run of that engine, which incidentally had 11.3 to one compression. So not mega compression on our small bore 421. So cue the video clip and let's see it running. Now we had a fairly mad cam in the engine. We had a Kent GTS4, which is which is pretty hairy, although the compression was relatively low for that cam at 11.3. But didn't it do well? We pulled 190 brake horsepower and 160 pound foot torque on that small bore manifold. 
Now, would you have seen that coming? Because most people don't, because most think, people think you have to bail out of that manifold and go bigger much earlier than that. So I had me run that, that test on that engine and did all the other cams and look I was looking to do. I stood there looking and thinking, 190 brake horsepower, GTS4, it revved quite well. I thought, can I get it to 200 with some bolt-on mods? So that seemed like a challenge. So at that point, we decided to throw something at it and I put a Simpson manifold on it. Beautiful manifold, lovely looking. This is a Simpson one with a, a two and a quarter inch exit. And no way did I think that that Simpson manifold on its own would have pushed us past 200 brake horsepower. So at the same time, I did a carburetor swap. And off came the 45s, and I went a pair of 48s, which at the time had 42 millimeter chokes in them. So plenty of airflow. Cue another Dyna run, this time the same GTS 4 cam, best deck distributor, 11.3 to 1 compression, Burton race head, but this time the 48 Webers and the Simpson. So wow, we're in a 197 brake with the 48s on now. That is tantalizing close to 200 horsepower. So, you know, bear in mind we picked up seven horsepower with bigger carbs and the switch to the bigger exhaust. Seven horsepower is good, but you think we did with carbs and exhaust. So the exhaust couldn't have been holding it back that much. What to do next? Because now, now I'm thinking I want to see 200 from this. I want to see 200 from this. And I was also curious to see what made the difference. Was it the carbs? Was it exhaust? It was probably a bit of both. But I figured if the engine still would have liked a bit more induction, we could go with bigger carbs. And as it happened, at the same time, I had a pair of 50s here belonging to another client and he wanted me to run them to see if they were good and working so we bolted the 50s on with the Simpson exhaust and ran it again It liked the 50s, didn't it? Better everywhere. I was surprised, wasn't it? Now, why? What what other differences? Well, there were the only differences were that the 50s were on a different intake manifold, and I think that might have been slightly better shaped. Um, I also found that on the 50s, the engine responded to a slight change in ignition timing but it was only slight. All these tests, 
it's run around 30, maybe 31 degrees for all of them. That's where the engine was happiest. So it wasn't in the timing, but there might have been a fraction in the timing. And you may have noticed that the number in the inset power needles doesn't always exactly match what I say. And the reason is, is that inset video footage where it shows the dials is actually uncorrected data. So the numbers I quote to you are always corrected, temperature, humidity, etc. But the dials is uncorrected because that's the only way I can do do it in the playback form. So sometimes you'll see there is a bit of difference to what I say and what the meter reads. But anyway, the meter I think in that last pull showed I think 204, not 205 break. But when I look at the data, it's actually 203. But hell, 203, that's brilliant, it like that. Um, we're done, or are we? No, we're not. Because as much as this is a great result and the Simpson manifold clearly works, um, what about a cheaper, cheaper alternative? Good old Ashley three piece. Cheap as chips, or relatively cheap. Um, you know, if we fit one of them and save, I don't know, seven, eight hundred pound in cost, how much power do we lose? You know, is the trade worth it? You know, for that kind of money saving, are, are we going to give away two, three, four, five brake horsepower? Don't know. But if only one way to find out how much power we're going to lose, and that's make some noise, boys. So let's hit the throttles and cue the next idle run. Two hundred and seven brake horsepower. In fact, if you saw the uncorrected number, uncorrected is two hundred eight. But two hundred and seven horsepower. So it's up on Simpson, or is it? Because below about fifty two, fifty two, the Simpson's better. So which which manifold's best? We're back to the original question: which manifold's best? Well, depends on what you do. Depends on your budget. But in this case, perhaps it more importantly depends what you're doing. Because when I look at this graph. I see the cheaper three-piece as being a circuit race manifold where you can really keep the engine on the ball, you can really keep it at the top of the rev range. And I see the Simpson manifold as actually being better suited to grunting out of tight hairpins on a rally stage. But hey, what do I know? I just work with dyno. It's for up to you guys to decide. And on that bombshell, you know what to do? Like, share, subscribe, ring the bell, and I'll do my best to ring you some more. Catch on the flip side, guys.